Now, the Nigeria's finance minister, Kemi Adeosho, on Sunday briefed the Nigerian media in Washington on the outcomes of the week-long World Bank and IMF annual meetings. The finance minister speaks on issues ranging from debt sustainability, tax reforms, and the general state of the domestic economy. The first question I was asked was around tax mobilization and um, how much specifically we've been able to generate since January and when the luxury taxes would come in. Um, the specific numbers I'm afraid I don't have off head, I'll have to give you back in the office but I can make those available. The luxury taxes have gone through what we call the, there's a requirement because we're part of ECOWAS, we have to go through a particular process. Uh, the Tariff Technical Committee have met we're really at the final stages of that, but there's a process, a legal process you must go through when you're in a, a customs union to actually vary uh, some specific taxes, and we're just at the final stages of that. So very, very quickly. Now, uh, how far with our tax mobilization efforts? Let me um, just, uh, and I'll combine that with the question, I think there was a second question about tax, saying that um, taxing the rich would not necessarily reduce inequality. Let me speak to that. Now, Nigeria's tax-to-GDP ratio is 6%. I think this is well known. The other countries that have such low tax-to-GDP ratios, Saudi Arabia, they don't even have a tax system. They're just introducing VAT for the first time. Uh, so the problem we have in Nigeria is not just the, 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 the system itself needed to be, needs to be overhauled. It's also that people are not complying. And the reason why they're not complying is there's no consequence for not complying. So we've started with the Voluntary Asset and Income Declaration Scheme. So far, the response has been very, very positive. I've had uh, already the first applications, people have started declaring and coming in. I've had a number of approaches from high net worth people asking me to speak to their, uh, because their personal taxes, as you all know, are payable to state governors, asking me to personally speak to state governors to allow them time to pay. And I have encouraged every governor that anybody who comes voluntarily and declares honestly and asks for time to pay, they should please, to the extent possible, allow them time to pay. Uh, because in some cases, the amount of the, uh, the tax that they have to pay is significant. So we don't want a situation where people needing to pay their taxes is actually stifling economic activity. So my appeal to the governors is if somebody comes honestly, quickly and willingly, please, please accede uh, to their request. But I think that's a very encouraging sign. Now, whether the taxing the rich will reduce inequality or not, it's all about public revenues. We need public revenues to provide public services. In any tax system, the, the, the burden must be borne by those who can bear it, uh, whose income allows them to bear it. So those with the highest income should, by definition, pay a greater share of the burden. The problem in Nigeria at the moment is that most of our taxpayers are at the lower level, which means the burden is actually being borne by those who can least afford um, to pay. So the man in the hot sun who is directing traffic, his taxes are deducted at source, whether he likes it or not. So why would we not want the billionaire or the trillionaire to proportionately pay out of his income? I think we need a mindset change around taxes in Nigeria, but I'm, so far we're encouraged by um, the response of both companies and individuals uh, to this tax amnesty. And whilst I've been here, I was able to speak to a number of ministers of other countries, particularly uh, Sri Indrawad in, in Indonesia, who has done, and to the Argentinian finance minister who's completed theirs, and just um, exchanging progress reports. And I think we're on track. I mean, when, when I spoke to them, I said, look, how was it at three months? They said, no, don't worry. Towards the end, everybody will rush. Now, that's exactly what happened in, in their countries, and they raised significant money. So I think there's every reason to be optimistic that uh, this tax mobilization effort will, will work and hopefully uh, bring long-term money. Now, that leads to the question about debt. Why are we having to borrow? Well, if you think back to the problem that we face, and it's very important to context this problem, our principal source of revenue plummeted by up to 85%. So we had two choices. You either cut public services massively, which would have meant massive job losses, or you borrow in the short term until you can begin to generate revenue. We felt as APC that laying off thousands and thousands of people was not the way to stimulate the economy. Also the fact that when we came into office, about 21, I believe, state governments were not paying salaries. 27. 27. Could not pay salaries. If we had allowed that situation to persist, we'd be in depression by now. So we took the view as government that the best thing for us to do was to stimulate demand, spend 
our way out of trouble. Get the government, state governors paying salaries, make sure federal government can pay salaries, invest in capital projects to get people back to work. Once growth is restored, you can now, and that was what was in my op-ed, begin to systematically reduce your dependence on borrowing and, re and increase revenue. When there's a recession, it's not the time to talk about tax. Now we're talking about that so that as the economy grows, people know that as your revenue is growing, please be aware of your obligations to the nation. That is the solution to borrowing. The solution to borrowing in Nigeria is that we must pay taxes. If we pay the taxes properly, there's no need to borrow. Of course, I'm not suggesting that there isn't a responsibility on the part of government to be more responsible, to be more efficient. We, we are really focusing on this. We're trying to find ways to cut costs. But fundamentally, we must invest. We don't have the power that we need. We don't have the roads yet. We're still work, we're work in progress. There's a lot of money to be spent to reposition this economy. And we need to generate much more by way of tax. If we're able to move our tax to GDP from just six where it is now to 10, it will significantly reduce the amount we need to borrow. And that will have a wider effect on the economy. One, it will reduce the demand for short-term borrowings. That will help to bring down interest rates. Two, it will create headroom for the private sector to, to borrow. They're currently being uh, crowded out. So uh, that, that's the strategy. Now, you, you, um, somebody asked about state governments um, borrowing. Let me tell you the work that we do in, in the DMO and in the Ministry of Finance on state borrowing. Any state government um, has to come to us and get an approval to borrow. We perform what is called a debt sustainability analysis. And if the, the repayment is more than 40% of their revenue, we, we turn it down. So when people talk about how many loans we're approving, they don't know how many loans we reject. Many do not go through. We look at the debt sustainability and say, this state cannot afford to service this loan, and therefore it's not approved. And we're constantly monitoring uh, state governments um, to ensure that the debt they take on is sustainable. Now, the problem with some of the state governments that have debt problems are legacy debt issues that came in, that were borrowed before we came into office. But since we've come into office, we've been very, very strict around debt sustainability, making sure that states do not take on more borrowings than they can service. Um, there was a qu question that Nigeria was to reduce public debt. Well, Nigeria's debt to GDP ratio is one of the lowest, actually. It's about 19. Most advanced countries are over 100%. Now, I'm not saying we want to move to 100%, but I'm saying we need to tolerate a little bit more debt in the short term to deliver the roads, the rail, the power. And that in itself will generate economic activity. That generates jobs, which will then generate revenue, which will then be used to pay it down. It's a strategic decision that, as a country, I think we have to make. But I, the thing I'll assure you is that this government is very, very prudent around debt. We don't borrow recklessly. We have no intention of bequeathing unserviceable debts on Nigerians. What we're simply trying to do is to ensure that we create enough headroom to invest in the capital projects that the country desperately needs. I don't think any Nigerian will argue with you that we don't need to invest in power. There's no Nigerian that will tell you don't need to do your roads. There's no Nigerian who is honest who will tell you that we don't have a 17 million unit housing deficit. So our vision for Nigeria is not for us to just continue hobbling as a, um, as a poor nation. And that was, I think, the message I took yesterday to the meeting, that we are middle-income countries now by classification. Nigeria, Angola and South Africa are middle income countries. So we have to benchmark ourselves against those who we wish to join. And to do that, we have to fix our infrastructure. But we'll do it jointly, as efficiently as possible. But the key really is revenue. Um, I think those are all my questions. Yeah, I didn't understand that question. Because we don't have a borrowing plan submitted to the World Bank. Yeah. We are, we are. They were to they were to approve a, 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 a billion naira loan. Oh, and they, no, they requested no, no. they requested they requested no. they requested a plan that, that, that a plan should be given to them on no, 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 no. I think there's a misunderstanding there. Yeah. 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 I answer the question on why we're going at thirteen percent more. Well those are the rates. Um, but you re recall also that we have an approval in the National Assembly, uh, with the National Assembly now to refinance some of our, our Naira into uh, external borrowings. And some of the meetings we had here uh, suggesting that we could borrow as low as 6% and below. So what we plan to do is as the Treasury bills mature, we'll refinance them longer and lower to give us more and that will bring down the, the cost of funds.